With flu and vaccine season well upon us, I am seeing more patients with concerns about Serva. I'm an orthopedic surgeon, so I rarely comment on public health issues like vaccinations. However, with recent focus on vaccinations and their side effects, I wanted to discuss Serva and how it may affect you. So what is Serva? Serva is an acronym that stands for Shoulder Injury Related to Vaccine Administration. And it's thought to be due to improper technique where the healthcare provider injects the vaccine either too deep or too high, causing the vaccine to end up somewhere other than inside the deltoid muscle. We think it's due to a reaction to the medication in either the subacromial bursa or the tendons in that area. It can also be due to a physical trauma from the needle um, to these tissues and or nerve irritation due to any of the above. In some cases, there have been reports of infection, which is just basically due to bad vaccine technique. The symptoms generally are pain in the shoulder that lasts more than the usual three to four days after a vaccine administration. And in cases where I see these patients, it's usually been there much longer in the order of weeks or months. In addition to the early onset pain, there are some late effects which include tendon problems, or frozen shoulder, uh, also known as adhesive capsulitis, and then there are some nerve-related issues including something called complex regional pain syndrome. Now how common is Serva? It's not clear, but it is being tracked by a program called the NVICP, that stands for National Vaccine Injury Compensation Program, and they've noted that in between the years of 2011 and 2016 that the claims for Serva increased 100-fold during that time period. Um, we don't have the new, newest data since the COVID vaccine push, but I imagine that will show um, a similar trend. Some statistics would be that 80% of these um, claims were in females, and uh, age group was everyone from 18 to 89. So my interpretation of this is that it makes sense that if, uh, since females have a more slender uh, build in general, that um, it's more common to receive an injection that goes too deep and ends up deep to the deltoid muscle. Here's a really cool video from a YouTube channel from a radiologist and it shows um, an example of someone who has Serva and it shows the actual imaging. You can see here that there's this high signal, this, this bright white area deep underneath the deltoid muscle and in this case it's in the subacromial bursa. This is not where the vaccine is supposed to go, it actually is supposed to go into the muscle where it will be quickly um, absorbed. But instead it has ended up in this area called the bursa and as you can see here there's a high signal which would signify some fluid and possibly some irritation of these um, of these tissues so how do we treat serva um, in many cases if we just give it some time and maintain flexibility um, the the problem will lim will go away on its own um, so there are some things that we need to do though to prevent that so a regular stretching program um, that will help to combat against uh, adhesive capsulitis or frozen shoulder. So I tell patients every day, even though your shoulder hurts, to try to take the shoulder through a full range of motion up to the side and behind your back as high as you can go. And this will help to keep those tissues, even though they're irritated, will keep them out to a proper length. We also want to treat downstream symptoms such as bursitis or tendonitis. Now you've heard me say before that I don't like to give cortisone injections because of the negative effects they have on tissues. And in this case, I would make an exception because in some cases, due to the chemical irritation from these types of uh, vaccines, um, a cortisone injection can often calm that down and reduce the pain and other symptoms. In cases of adhesive capsulitis or frozen shoulder, I mean, this is, these are patients who have tried but they haven't been able to maintain their range of motion, a course of physical therapy can be very helpful. And it's very rare for um, these types of problems to require surgery. They generally get better as time goes on. The long-term outcomes are difficult to know, however. We don't know because a lot of people don't follow up in the long term. Some studies estimate that only 30% of these patients re fully resolve at their final follow-up. But keep in mind that many patients who have resolved will not follow up, so I'm sure that statistic is artificially skewed. There are some case reports of people who require surgery, but these are generally for patients who have an infection or an aggravation of an underlying problem. But the results seem to be good and in line with other reports of patients who have surgery for general problems of the shoulder, such as rotator cuff or bicep tendon problems. Now, as far as long-term damage, is it possible that someone can have a long-lasting uh, injury from a vaccine? And my thoughts are that these vaccines contain chemicals. There are preservatives and antibiotics in every injection, and that would cause irritation and inflammation of the nerves and tendons in the area. So yes, it is possible. I think the biggest one, though, that can cause a long-term uh, problem is something called complex regional pain syndrome. And complex regional pain syndrome is basically a, an irritation of the nerves in any part of the body, but in the shoulder this can happen, where they become irritable and they send false pain signals to the brain even long after the pain signal has dissipated. 
Other conditions that can last a long time include adhesive capsulitis, which we've already talked about, and that's that frozen shoulder, which can be very tough to treat. It can last over a year in some cases. And it's nobody's fault because it's obviously difficult to stretch and it's painful to do the physical therapy exercises, but this can be a long-term problem. But in general, I think that as time goes on, we can expect them to, uh, to improve. So I wanted to focus on prevention because there are some things that you can do. This is a picture showing where the intended location of the injection should be. If you are thin, you may want to remind the, your healthcare provider uh, of this fact so that they avoid a deep injection. They may want to actually pinch your deltoid muscle to bunch it up so that, um, that they are less likely to penetrate through the muscle. And in some cases, they may want to use a shorter needle before giving you the vaccine. If you are having symptoms more than a week after your injection, you should present to a doctor early, and definitely if it's been longer than a month. Early intervention can help prevent later, more serious problems such as adhesive capsulitis. So vaccines are important, they help to save lives, and I would highly recommend that you get yours. But when you do, please keep these tips in mind to help you have the best outcomes and avoid these types of problems. If you like this content, please hit the like button so that the video can spread to as many people as possible so that they can be helped as well. And please consider subscribing to the channel if you want to learn the best and latest in shoulder and arm care. Thanks for watching.